Of all the new products released this year, I have to say without a doubt, the Microfogger 5 is by far the coolest thing I've used in the studio this year. So what is the Microfogger 5? Well, this is a fairly inexpensive handheld battery operated fog machine that you can use on any of your photo shoots or video shoots. And it has a lot of really cool features. I wanna dive right into this. I've been using this for the last couple of weeks and this is something I've always wanted, but I've just never picked up. And so when David sent this from the F-Stopper studio down here to Puerto Rico, I was super excited to play around with it. I actually have two units. Let me show you the ins and outs of how this works and why you might wanna buy it and why you might find that this isn't as good as a normal smoke machine. All right, so it comes in the box like this. This is the Microfogger 5 by Vozentech. This is the Pro Edition. This just came out maybe like a month ago, so it's a pretty new product. It's the fifth version of their handheld foggers. I've never owned any handheld foggers, and so I was really excited when this came a couple weeks ago. Let me open this up and show you what comes in the package. Basically what you get is you get the handheld unit here. You get a little uh, protective piece that covers the actual heating element. And then you have the heating element here, which you fill with this liquid fog. There's a few other things that come in here, a charger, some Q-tips, and it also comes with this little handy remote that allows you to change the power settings or control multiple units if you wanna put the fogger further away from the camera. Now, if you've ever owned a vaporizer or anything like this, this has an atomizer built in. And so basically you just screw on this reservoir on the top, just like this. And then there's a little rubber gasket here that you just pull off. And then with your liquid fog, you just fill up this chamber. This fog does seem a lot more dense than some of the other uh, liquid fog that I've used in normal smoke machines. And then you do need to let this sit for 15 minutes and absorb all of that liquid because the heating element inside this can burn out if you try to use this without it being completely saturated. Using this is really simple. There's a power switch on the bottom to turn it on. There is a compartment that you can access the lithium battery, which is really convenient. And then it has just three buttons. It has a select and a mode button. And then it also has the smoke button itself. Let's go ahead and put the protective cap on top just so that nothing gets too hot right up there by your fingers. And basically with these two buttons, you can control two settings. You can control the fan speed, how quickly the smoke is gonna be propelled out of the top of this. And then you can control the strength of the heating element, which is going to determine how much smoke is actually produced. And of course, with the heating element and the fan set to different levels, you can really tailor the amount of smoke that's going to come out of this unit. With the fan set to the lowest setting, if I just go ahead and turn this on, you can see it just kind of adds a little bit of smoke. And then if I go all the way to the highest setting, you can hear the difference of how much smoke is being propelled out of this little unit. Now on top of the reservoir, there is a threaded connector. I can attach a variety of different attachments to this. The first attachment is this gooseneck. I can just put this on top here and spin it around. I honestly probably leave this on all of the time because it's really handy just to get the smoke a little further away from the device. And you can see it makes the stream a little bit thinner and you can also move it around quite a bit. There is another attachment here. This is called the circular diffuser. If I go ahead and fire it now, you can see what it's doing. Kind of a cool effect, especially if you wanna put a subject in front of it and you backlight it, you can get this really cool effect coming around your product shot. Also comes with this handy rake, which just spreads the beam of smoke a little bit more. So you can do something like this. And perhaps my favorite attachment is this open cell foam which gives you this liquid fog effect because it's going to allow the fog to spread out in the foam and also cool down. Check this out. That is really cool. And finally, one other cool thing you can do with this gooseneck um, is if you have any bubble solution, you can dip this in the solution and you can create these really interesting bubbles filled with smoke. Now, unfortunately, I can't quite figure out how to get the bubble to leave the attachment. Maybe there's a way to have something a little bit more narrow to where it would fall off of this. 
So for me, I can only get this to stay attached, but um, my son absolutely loves that effect. Now, if you go to Vazen Tech's website, you can find a bunch of different accessories that you can use. The other accessory that I have is a replacement safety cap that has LEDs built into it. And if I plug this into the top and go into the settings, I can control the color of the LED light, which will change the color of my smoke. Now, it's not actually changing the fog itself. It's just kind of illuminating the fog as it comes out. So I find that this isn't really convenient if you need actual colored fog, but if you're doing some kind of video effect where you can hide this behind you know, your product or something, you can use this to create a little bit of color right at the base of the smoke. So that's the Microfogger 5 Pro Edition. Let's go through some of the pros and cons of this unit so that you can decide if this is something that you might wanna to add to your own photography. The biggest pro is that this thing is tiny. Um, it fits in my camera bag easily. It's battery operated, so you can use this out on location. I have the normal smoke machine, or one of the normal smoke machines that I use, and uh, you can see this thing is just huge. Um, and this isn't really even that big of a fog machine compared to what you can buy. So in comparison, this thing, I mean, I can fit one or two of these in my bag. I can also conceal them really easily. So if I wanna put this behind a model or behind a product or, you know, kind of tucked out of the way or I need to put it, you know, under a box or under a car seat, this is way easier to conceal than, you know, something massive like this. Another great thing about this is the startup time is nothing. I mean, I can turn this off turn it on and because it's so small, it heats up, uh, you know, maybe in 30 seconds and then once this unit is on, it's ready to go at all times. So I can instantly start making smoke. Compared to my normal fog machine, this thing takes five minutes to warm up and then it also has this ready light that turns on and off as it sits waiting to be used. And then if I use it for say a minute, it's going to uh, turn off like it just did there and I have to wait again for this to turn on. So the startup time for this is way more convenient um, but it comes at a cost, it's not quite as powerful. Another thing that I find really useful with the Microfogger 5 compared to my normal smoke machine is that this does produce less smoke, which I find really useful in many cases. Sometimes I just wanna add a hint of smoke or I just want a little bit of smoke on the ground and I don't wanna fog up the whole room. If you've ever worked with a fog machine, you know that once the room becomes foggy, you lose all your contrast, your lighting and everything is going to hit the fog and all of a sudden your images look really flat. This clears really quickly. I can literally fire it off, blow it out of the way, and in a few seconds, it's almost as if the room has no smoke in it. It's kind of an advantage and a disadvantage, but I find that in many cases, I need less smoke than I think I need. If I use this big fog machine, I mean, you can see how much smoke that that produces, and now I've probably ruined my shot for the next five minutes. So let me go ahead and clear all this out so I can start filming again. All right, so it's been about three minutes and you can see I still have a lot of fog in this room, so I'm just gonna have to roll with it. Um, the Microfogger also has the control of, you know, the fan and the element speed. I'm sure you could buy more advanced fog machines that would allow this too, but mine literally is just on or off. It's nice being able to control the flow and the power setting and all of that, so I really do appreciate having a few more settings built into this unit. Speaking of firing these things, it does come with a handy remote. Uh, I think out of the box, a, B, C, and D are programmed to be different power settings, but you can go into the menu and you can turn on, say, just channel A for this unit. And then if you have a second unit like I have here, I can make this one B, and then I can control them separately, which is really handy. The remote that I have for my main fog machine, it's just on or off, there's no settings, I can't control multiple units. This fog machine, I think I bought this right after Halloween, which is the best time to get good deals on smoke machines. Um, I think this was like 30 bucks, but it has absolutely no settings. So I can't control the flow. And as you just saw, every now and then it kind of does a puff of smoke anyway. So unless you're buying a smoke machine that's hundreds of dollars or maybe even a thousand dollars, you're not going to get the versatility that you would get with this microfogger um, and definitely not with this remote. Some other things that you can do with these units is you can control the delay and the looping. So if you want this to go off say, you know, 10 seconds after you hit the button or the remote, or if you want it to just constantly spit out a little bit of smoke over and over because you're doing a product shot and you have everything set up and you got the fogger in the background and you don't wanna to have to go over there, you could do some really clever uh, relays and delays and loops and that sort of thing. 
And because it's so small, you have all of these attachments that are really easy to put on here. I wish my other smoke machine had some attachments. I have run the smoke machine through like a PVC pipe and then put a bunch of ice around it so that I can cool the smoke and keep it close to the ground. But obviously having something like that takes up a lot of space. So, you know, if you're trying to do something in a smaller room, you're not going to have the advantage of having ice and PVC pipes and stuff. It's really nice to have these little attachments because they do work really well and they snap together relatively easily. It just gives you a lot of variety. So if you do pick up one of these, I would highly recommend getting as many of these attachments as you can because you never know which one of these accessories is gonna be perfect for the smoke you're trying to create. And finally, when it comes to pros of this unit, one thing that I really appreciate is that you can unscrew the bottom and take the lithium battery out. So if you wanna buy multiple batteries, have them all charged up, you can literally change them out, hot swap them, and uh, use this throughout your whole shoot. A lot of companies now like to build the battery directly into the unit. I have this Dyson vacuum cleaner that was like six, $700, and I absolutely hate it because the battery always seems to die. I can't take the battery out, and then it takes you know two or three hours to charge, and when I'm vacuuming, the last thing I wanna do is, is you know stop vacuuming and then come back to it five hours later. Um, this is great. You can take the battery out. So I definitely recommend maybe buying an extra battery if you use a lot of smoke on your set. That being said, the battery in here does last about 30 minutes at full power for continuous use. Um, I never hold the button down and use this continuously for 30 minutes. So for me, this kind of lasts all day or definitely throughout a full shoot. But if you're trying to produce a lot of smoke, um, you definitely might want another battery. And then it also charges with USB-C. Um, you can plug this in and use it plugged in, but it will drain the battery quicker than the battery charges through USB-C. So um, having that second battery is definitely an advantage. So let's talk about some of the cons of this unit. The first one being it's just not nearly as powerful as the bigger units that you might have like this. And as you can see, the smoke is still lingering in this room from the one time that I fired my normal smoke machine. So if you need to fog up a huge room or if you're doing a photo shoot outside and you have a way to power your AC smoke machine, this is by far going to give you a lot more smoke than these little mini foggers. As I mentioned earlier, the battery life on these units is going to be about 20 to 30 minutes at full power, depending on how often you're running it. Um, again, I don't really use fog in that way, so it's not a big deal. But if you're gonna be out on location, definitely get that extra battery. It's not as reliable as having something that's plugged into an inverter to a battery or plugged into you know, AC power like this one. Now, Vozentech mentions that they sell an adapter for a tripod so that you could mount this on a light stand or any kind of one quarter inch thread. And I didn't receive that when David sent this to me, um, but I started looking into it. And the way that it works is you have to unscrew the battery cap and then you have to buy the accessory that then replaces that. And it adds the little jack to the bottom so that you can you know, plug this to a tabletop tripod or a light stand or something like that. I find that it's really annoying that they didn't just build that into the unit itself. And it also appears that when you screw that in, it doesn't necessarily sit flush. So I don't know if this unit would not, you know, sit perfectly like this with the adapter on there. So I do wish that they had the one quarter inch screw anywhere on this unit. That would be pretty handy. Otherwise, you have to put some Velcro on this or a zip tie or just find another way to mount this if you do want to mount it in a kind of strange orientation and not just lay it straight on your table. Like I said, I do have the LED attachment, which allows me to colorize my smoke, which would be kind of helpful for certain video uh, applications or some of the B-roll that you're seeing on the screen now. But one thing that I kind of hate that they did was they have these four little prongs here, and I just know that these needles are going to get bent. They basically just push into the connector on top. If you've ever owned Alien B strobe lights and you had their Pocket Wizard remote it was the same kind of design. I think this is like the most fragile thing you could do. It reminds me of those uh, old compact flash card readers that you know, you'd know you have built into your camera and then you put the card in the wrong way and it bends a pin. I don't know why they did this, but if you do buy the LED topper, I would probably just permanently keep this on. Of course, you do have to take it off to remove the reservoir tank, but I feel like this is going to break over time. So you definitely wanna be careful when you're putting the top on it if you buy this accessory. 
And finally, maybe the biggest downsize, depending on your budget, is just how much this costs. This is $250 as the base unit, and then you can quickly get up to about $300, maybe even $350 if you start buying the LED adapter and you buy all of the accessories. To me, $250 isn't really that expensive for a fog machine that I'm gonna use fairly often out on location. It can't compete with the $30 bargain <laughs> smoke machine that I get immediately after Halloween, but this is way more convenient and useful. And when I started looking at the pricing for the competitors to this, there's one called the Fog Genie. I was shocked to find that it is $500 to $700, depending on what kit you get. Granted, it's much larger, it's about twice the size. It probably produces two to three times as much smoke. But in my opinion, if I'm gonna spend $500 on a fogger, I would just go the route that I did, where I buy two of these, I can run them both at the same time, or I can separate them out and have different effects and more dynamic smoke if I need it. $500 on a fog genie just seems insane to me. And so $250, it really doesn't seem that bad. Um, another thing that I didn't mention in the pros that is kind of cool about this is everything is modular. Um, you can take all of this off. You can replace the battery. You can replace this reservoir. You can replace the atomizer heating element that's in here. These do burn out from time to time. And so it's an extra cost that you're going to have to factor in. But it's also nice that this thing is pretty repairable, whereas a normal smoke machine, if this thing stopped heating up, which has happened with other units that I bought, I just have to go out and buy another one. I don't know how to repair that. It's not serviceable. They're all made in China. And you know, in a year or two, this unit's not even gonna be around anymore. You probably can't buy this specific unit. So I do appreciate that everything can be taken apart, cleaned. Kind of a con about that is I have had a heating element already burn out. And I have to say, taking this thing apart and getting all the juice out of it and cleaning it up and replacing the heating element, it's kind of messy. It's not something I would want to do out on location in the middle of a shoot. Um, I have, you know, fog everywhere on this table. And so while it's nice that you can replace everything and the parts are kind of serviceable, it's definitely not the cleanest process to do that. So before I leave you guys, I wanted to show you the output level of two of these running versus my main fog machine. And one thing that I noticed that I have to dig a little deeper in is that both of these units are set to the highest full power, both the fan and the element. But when I run them at the same time, you can see one is producing way more smoke than the other. And this one is kind of spraying uh, liquid all over the place. So I don't really know what's going on. Both of the reservoirs are pretty full and they've been saturated for, you know, a day now. So I don't know why this one is acting a little weird. I can see where maybe you buy one of these and you kind of have some little issues popping up. The instructions are very detailed on what you should and should not do. So definitely read through those thoroughly. Maybe I am doing something wrong here but um, I've been using these for weeks and then suddenly I go to do this test and I notice that the output level is different on these despite them both you know, being at the same power. So what I'm gonna do is just show you quickly if I fire both of these at the same time. Something is clearly wrong with this one unit. And then fire this one. I mean, it's night and day. It's like, you know, this is like 50 times stronger than one of these, but I think for most applications, this is perfect. And I'm gonna be using this all the time. I actually have a couple photo shoots coming up that this is going to be really nice to have out on location and not have to bring the fogger or a generator or figure out AC power. So if you guys enjoy using smoke in your own photo and video projects as much as I do, go to the link in the description, the Vazen Tech Micro Fogger 5 Pro Edition. Super excited about this, and maybe I can finally retire this massive smoke machine.